Praise the Lord. Before we hear the preach of God's word today, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this day which thou hast made, that we may rejoice and be glad in it. Thank in thee, O Lord, that may redeem the time, for the days are evil, not forsaking the assembly ourselves together as a matter of some is, but to exhort one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. Pray, O God, that I may bring forth exhortation, edification, and comfort, that my labor in thee be not in vain, that I may feed thy sheep, thy flock, which thou hast purchased with thy very own blood, as man should not live but alone, but in every word which proceedeth out of thy mouth. We thank thee for giving us this day our daily bread, and preserve thy pure words for us, as heaven and earth shall pass away, but thy word shall be forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us turn our Bibles once again to the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, once again it is written, And he, the Lord Jesus Christ, said unto them his apostles, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Once again, verse 15 of Mark chapter 16 is known as Christ's Great Commission. And we obey Christ's Great Commission with a heart's desire, as it is written, Psalm 37 verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It is our heart's desire to obey Christ's Great Commission in such a way that verse 16 would be fulfilled that souls would believe and be baptized to be saved. For once again in John chapter 15, verse 8, it is written, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and so shall ye be my disciples. Praise God. Back in the year 1999, my wife and I returned back to Honolulu, Hawaii, after preaching the gospel for a little bit less than a year here in Thailand, we preached in Bangkok, Thailand at the time, as well as in Pattaya, Thailand. And we returned back to Honolulu, Hawaii in 1999. And at the Dora Faith Church and Bible School in Honolulu, Hawaii, one of the assistant pastors or the youth pastor of that church was talking about me in front of that church and told them all there that he knows we're of God. Because while we were gone, the fruit that we produced while we were there in Holland, Hawaii, were still in that church. We didn't just bring souls to the church and they walked out the back door. No, even when we had left Holland, Hawaii, the souls we had brought to that church were not only saved and born again, they were still in that church, growing in the Lord and serving the Lord. And the youth pastor was exhorting the brethren of the North Faith Church about us that he knew we're of God because not only do we have fruit, our fruit also remained. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, Jesus Christ says, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. As I've been talking about earlier, and this has been the theme for all day today, one thing that I absolutely despise and I am completely allergic to is losing and i have a hard time getting a getting a <coughs> being around losers i have a hard time getting along with losers no i just hate losing i despise it with all of my heart i am the sorest loser there is therefore i believe in winning and in a band christ's great commission we win when verse 16 is fulfilled when souls believe that are baptized and are saved. And this is how we obey Christ's great commission, not to be one that just beateth the air, as the Apostle Paul warns us about, those that are cast away, though they preach the gospel, and there is as those that just beat the air, or not as the Apostle Paul warns us about in 1 Corinthians 14, one that just speaketh in the air. 
and how many attempt to make Christ's great commission, but really, they're just one that just speaketh in the air with no fruit. No, we desire to bring forth fruit to the glory of God, the souls who believe and be baptized to be saved. And in order to obey Christ's great commission, to go into the world and preach the gospel with every creature, to do so in a way that you bring forth fruit to the glory of God, you have got to remember who you are in Christ. Who are we in Christ? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. This is a thus saith the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. This is gospel truth. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, in verse 17, please take a note of the word any. That means any and everybody. This can apply to anyone, even to losers out there who may have grown up as losers and all they know is losing. This can apply to you. If any man be in Christ, what do you have to do? Just get into Christ, that's all. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Notice it doesn't say he might become a new creature. Notice it doesn't say he could become a new creature. He is a new creature. Therefore, no matter who you are, if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Stop looking at your flesh. Stop looking at your past. Look at who you are in Christ and receive it and walk in it. Be who God has created you to be. And in Christ, you are a new creature. Any man, anybody, no matter what your past is, no matter how weak your flesh is, any man, anybody, if you're in Christ, you are a new creature. Take God at his word. Believe what thus saith the Lord. Receive it and be what God has called you to be. But, but you don't understand. I used to and I am and, and my flesh. And stop all that. What does the Bible say? It says if any man be in Christ, that is anybody, he is a new creature. Not he might be. Not he will become. Not he could be. He is a new creature if you're in Christ. It goes on to say, old things are passed away. Stop looking at your past. It is gone. It is passed away. Stop looking at your flesh. It is gone. It is passed away. Behold. Now when the Bible has this word, behold, please take note. When you look throughout the scriptures and you see this word, behold, it is an important word. Behold. All things. Not some things. All things are become new. Once again, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I was born again back in 1995, as I testified about. God called me to preach the gospel since I was born again. I was born again based on the promise found in God's word. Jesus Christ says in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you what things you desire. When you pray, believe that you see them, and ye shall have them. At that time, I was a drunken, drug-addicted prize fighter with idols on my neck, practicing the occult with strings given to me by witch doctors, listening to an unhealthy amount of rap music just for the violence, with an unhealthy amount of violent movies. I was just a man filled with hate and rage and was a chief of sinners. When I saw that promise found in God's word, I realized this, the Bible has to be the word of God because who would be so foolish as to put a promise like that in a book that I can take to the test. Therefore, if it fails, Jesus is a liar, the Bible is a lie, and I will fight against it. But if it works, 
Therefore I say unto you, what things I desire when you pray, believe that you then you shall have them. This is the answer for life. That means I have the answer for life. That means the Bible is the word of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. And all that the Bible says about Jesus is all true. So I took God at his word with a vow to God that if he kept his promise and I would put my whole life on his promise that I would preach his word to everybody and anybody, anywhere and everywhere. I was born again. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, but of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And when I was born again, the first thing I did after throwing my, my idols and the strings on my wrist given to my witch doctors and the rap music and the Hollywood violent movies after having my girlfriend at that time throw them all away, I called up all my friends. We didn't have a mobile phone where you can just press friends. We had a, a notebook with all the friends' phone numbers and called them all up to tell them that I'm not going to be going out in the more in the streets. I'm not going to be drinking or doing drugs anymore. If you want to be my friend, you've got to come to church over friends no more. And one of my friends had grown up in a church, though he himself was not born again at the time, but he had witnessed people being born again and said, Tony, you're born again. And told me about how when he was raised in America, he was half Thai and half American, he was raised in the church and saw people just like me said, evil, wicked, just like you, you get born again and then you become a preacher. And he said, you're going to become a preacher. I know it. I've seen this happen so many times. It's people like you that become preachers. Praise God. My girlfriend returned back to the room. I now had a name to call myself born again. That was the experience I had received. Uh-oh. What's wrong? We're in sin. I did not know the word fornication, but I knew there was a biblical word for what we were doing and sleeping together before we were married. The word is fornication. I didn't know the word. I said, this is a sin. There's a word for it. I don't know what it is. We got to get married today. And praise God that day. My wife and I went to the courthouse here in Bangkok, Thailand, and we got married. Praise God. We needed a witness, and my mother-in-law, my late mother-in-law, my wife's mother, showed up to sign the papers with two New Testaments, one for me and one for my wife, as she was a born-again Christian and had been praying for us. I did not know that at that time. And one of those New Testaments was taped back together because my wife, years prior, when she was a rebellious teenager, had ripped up the Bible, threw it in the trash can, and she had re recovered it from the trash can, taped it back together with faith in God that one day she would want that Bible. Praise God, we were born again. Shortly thereafter, within a day or two or three or days, at the most of three days, just shortly thereafter, we went to church on the Lord's Day. And praise God at that church, going there was born again. What an experience it was to fellowship with the brethren. It wasn't the singing that was nice. It wasn't the air conditioning that was nice of the church. It was the brethren. I had never been around such people as that. Psalm 133, verse 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. There was just so much love amongst the brethren. It was such a blessing because before I was born again, wherever you went to, you had to keep your guard up. People are trying to scam you, trying to take your girlfriend, trying to take your money. They're trying to do this and do that. People are lying to you and deceiving you. And you always had to keep your guard up. You couldn't trust anybody. But at this church, it was amongst the people that loved the Lord and loved people. And what a blessing it was to be with such people like that. I didn't want to leave. We stayed all day, because that's how churches do it here in Thailand. Church is an all-day affair. And we went back to our room back in the evening time, and after being amongst such saints, such sanctified Christians, such born-again, spirit-filled Christians, I didn't look to the Word of God. 
I looked to myself. That was the last day I looked to myself. At that time, when I was first born again, after a few days in Christ, I looked to myself and thought, there is no way I can make it as a Christian. There is no way that I can make it with such fellowship, with such beautiful, godly people as those at that church. I started thinking about my past, that wherever I used to go to was always a problem to fight. Because since I was born, because I'm half American, half Vietnamese, in America, people look down upon me, whether it's the whites or the blacks or the Latinos, because they saw that I was half Vietnamese. And because I was born right after the war in Vietnam, and a lot of their relatives had died in the Vietnam War, and I was born on an army base of all places, so everybody there had relatives died in the Vietnam War, they took out their anger on me. And I start off with a very hard school, Cape Fear Elementary School, which was a African-American school. <laughs> and I was the only person of lighter color there. And it's since elementary school, I had to learn how to fight. And even amongst Vietnamese refugees that I grew up with, those would be family or Calabash cousins, because, you know, when you grow, when refugees get together, you're all family now. And they were jealous of me. They would do things to me and set me up. I learned how to ball my fist up and pop them in the nose and learn how to fight. And since I was a young child, wherever I went to, I learned I had to fight. Because no matter where I went to, people looked down upon me because being a mix, being half American and half Vietnamese. And so I learned to ball up my fist and fight no matter what, what, where I went to. And now that I was born again, thinking about my past, I was thinking about everywhere I go, I end up in a fight. Everywhere I go, I'm knocking somebody out. I'm putting people in the hospitals. I'm hurting people. And so I realized, I thought, because I looked at myself, I'll never make it. I'll never make it with such saints. I'll end up hitting somebody. I'll end up knocking somebody out. Somebody's going to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. And I'm going to knock somebody out, break their jaw, knock their teeth out, which is what I was known for before, and get in, not really scared about the trouble, but not be able to fellowship with such saints. So on that Lord's Day, that evening, I made up my mind to backslide. Why did I want to backslide that first Lord's Day? Because I was looking to myself. Too many professing Christians are backsliding out there because they're looking to their self. They're looking to their past. They're condemning themselves. They're reliving their past. They're thinking about the, how they blew it, the mistakes they've made in the past, and they give up on the Lord and they backslide. I tried to backslide. On that Lord's Day that evening, we went out to our old hangout place, which was on Selim Road, Soy 4. Now, it is a complete sodomite area. <laughs> At the time, it was not. Praise God. It was a place where people listened to gangster rap. G-Funk is what it was called. G-Funk music went to, and with lots of marijuana that would flow. So if you didn't have money for the marijuana, somebody else paid for it. And there's always joints and marijuana to be passed around at the different clubs we went to that played what we call back then G-Funk music, gangster rap music. And we'd all get high and listen to that music. So on that Lord's Day, we went to that place where we used to hang out at to get high and backslide. But when I arrived there, I did enjoy the music no more. The bass, the set was hurting my ears. It was disgusting me you see I'd become a new creature in Christ I went and says it steadily become a new creature in Christ I am a new creature in Christ how because I was in Christ I'm not keeping Christ he's keeping me I am in him he's got a hold of me he made me into a new creature so I didn't enjoy the music the smell of the marijuana smoke, I didn't enjoy it no more. Before the smell, it would draw me to wherever that smell was to get a hit of a joint to smoke some marijuana. Now it disgusts me. I didn't want it. The smell was making me sick. Even this very day, even the smell of cigarettes make me sick. Even people smoke somewhere else and the whiff of it comes into our room or comes into our window and just that small whiff makes me sick nowadays. I'm a new creature in Christ. I couldn't take the smell, the music, and then seeing my so-called friends and how fake they were. And again, you got to put your guard up with them. You can't trust them. They're up to no good. 
And back in those days, before I was born again, I used to go looking for fights. Had a reputation of being a street fighter, as I was a prize for at the time. And on the streets, I had been jumped by a gang. Uh, actually, it was a friend of mine got jumped, and he had asthma, and he couldn't get away. And everybody else ran away from him, and I stayed with them. And it was over 30 people, and they're going to kill him. And so I had to stay with them to fight it out. And during that street fight, it was life and death, balls to the wall. It was, you had to fight it out. So I delivered a, a hard, short right hand to a gangster, a man who was a troublemaker, a head of a gang there on the streets, and busted his jaw so bad that his jawbone actually came out of his skin. He had a compound fracture. That's how hard I busted him. And then I had a, a reputation in the streets, and they used to call me I Macron or the hammer fist on the streets. And so I had this reputation of being a street fighter, of having this hard right hand. And so that night that I was trying to backslide, a young, my age, American Thai, half American, half Thai, from Florida, man, picked a fight with me. He came from Florida and was a street fighter there. And he wanted to take me on, play king of the hill, or we call who the man, he wanted to take me on in a street fight, and he thought he could beat me. And so he wanted to show everybody he could take me on and fight me. I didn't want to fight that night. The love of God had been shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost given to us. In Christ, I'm a new creature. That old things are passed away. The street fighting Tony was gone. I didn't want to fight this man. And he kept picking a fight with me, calling me every name in the book, ever he could insult me, mock me in front of others, get everybody to laugh at me, saw me tell me what kind of a sissy I was with all kinds of very vulgar names he was calling me. And finally he began touching my wife. And I eventually had to say, let's go outside. We'll go to the parking lot and then we'll go to the top floor and whoever wins comes back down. So we went up to this parking lot, he and I together, to fight it out one-on-one -on -one to see who the man is, who's the king of the hill. And we're walking up the ramp to the parking lot, going up the ramps. He was telling about who he was in Florida and how nobody could beat him. He's half American, half Thai. He's got Muay Thai in his blood. And he was running his mouth, talking big talk, because amongst fighters, you got to be that way. you got to be proud. You, you've got to be confident. you got to be the man. And he was the man. He, he was the street fighter. And we got to the top floor, and right away he started throwing his hands. And of course, as a, from a Muay Thai background, I put my hands and elbows up to block his punches, and was seeing everything he was throwing. And right when he had an opening, because he grew up street fighting in America, he left his neck open. You can't do that here in Thailand. Because our shins, from a Muay Thai background, will hit your juggler vein and put you to sleep like that. And right when I saw the opening, I threw my shin up, and the very last second, I pulled my body away, so I didn't want my shin to hit him in the neck. And when I pulled my body away, my foot slapped him in the face, which slowly began knocking him out, and I was able to catch him. So I didn't want his head to hit the concrete, sat him down, and began preaching to him. I realized God's word is true. Every jot, every tittle is true in the word of God. God has magnified his word above all his name. How do I know this book, the authorized version of the Holy Bible, the world's bestseller without a copyright? How do I know this book is God's word? Because I've experienced it. And the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And one such as myself with a past, one such of myself with such wicked flesh is a new creature in Christ. And the old things are passed away, and all things have become new. And I was, I was preaching to that young man and realized I'm now a preacher. Preach to the young man. I saw that young man used to be me. That's exactly who I used to be before I was in Christ. And now look at me. I can see who I once was and who I am now. And that was it forever backsliding, forever giving up, forever quitting on the Lord. From then on, 
I allow God to work through me because it's in Christ I am a new creature. You cannot preach the gospel. You cannot fulfill Christ's great commission. And you cannot be fruitful to the glory of God unless you know who you are in Christ. Who are we in Christ? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, no matter what your past is, no matter who you were before, no matter what's going on with your flesh, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Who are we in Christ? We are new creatures. Verse 20. Now then, we are. What are we? Verse 20 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Who are we in Christ? We are new creatures. And as we're new creatures in Christ... All things have become new. The old things are passed away. What are we now? We are ambassadors for Christ. Unless you are an ambassador for Christ, you cannot fulfill Christ's great commission to bring forth fruit to the glory of God. Until you are who God says you are and has created you to be in Christ Jesus, until you are an ambassador for Christ, you cannot obey Christ's great commission and bring forth fruit to the glory of God. When I was 14 years old in 1988, I caught the Thai bug. There in Roanoke, Virginia, living with my grandparents, I caught the virus. I wanted to live in Thailand. In 1988, I began reading every book I get my hands on about Thailand. Every documentary, television show, anything on television about Thailand, I watched. I became a fanatic for Thailand in 1988. At that time, there was no possible way that I, a 14-year-old, would ever end up in Thailand. My earthly father in 1988 was working security for the Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. And because he did such a good job working for the U.S. government as a soldier with the Olympics, the South Korean government offered him a job to work with their version of the CIA, their version of intelligence. And he was going to take this job, a very high-paying job, and live the rest of his life in Seoul, South Korea. This was in 1988. But there in a small town, Roanoke, Virginia, I caught the Thai bug. All I could think about was Thailand. When I was 14 years old, I could look at the time on the East Coast of the United States of America and know exactly what time it was in Thailand. I became a fanatic for Thailand because of the martial art Muay Thai, Thai boxing. And that became my lifelong dream was to move to Thailand and become a Thai boxer. That's all I could think about in 1990 since I was 14 years old. Two years later, in 1990, the U.S. government saw they're going to lose my earthly father. They saw that he got offered this job from the South Korean government, and they didn't want to lose him. So they offered him a job, the U.S. government did, in Bangkok, Thailand, that he could work on the U.S. Embassy and get diplomatic status with a diplomatic passport and live in diplomatic housing, and his dependents, his children, myself, his son, could go to a diplomatic school, the International School of Bangkok, and he could live this diplomatic life by going to Vietnam and looking for the, the remains of those who are missing action to, to settle the case between Vietnam and America that all the soldiers are dead, recover the remains of the dead soldiers, and then American Vietnam could have relationships once again. Once again. And they handpicked him for this job. He turned down that job in South Korea. His then wife at the time was very upset with him and never forgave for doing that. And he took up this job with the U.S. government and moved from South Korea to California to refresh his Vietnamese language schools, skills and then to Bangkok, Thailand, and then wrote to me and asked if I could move with them because he's living in this big diplomatic house, three stories tall, a mansion, he had plenty of room, and I could go to this diplomatic school called the International School of Bangkok for free in 1990. In October 
1990, around this time. I forget what date it was exactly, but it was around this time, towards the end of October. Maybe it was even this very day, I'm not sure. In October of 1990, 30 years ago, I moved here to Bangkok, Thailand. And I moved here as a diplomat son. That means I had rules to obey. You see, my earthly father, living in Bangkok, Thailand, was working out of the U.S. Embassy here and was diplom a diplomat, a, under diplomatic status. And now we got to be under his dependent, his son, diplomatic status as well. They give us diplomatic immunity. And now we had to live a certain way. If we didn't live a certain way, they would kick the U.S. government, the U.S. Embassy, would kick us out of Thailand and have us blacklisted to ever come back here again. We were under the will of the U.S. Embassy with rules to obey to act a certain way while we lived here in this foreign country to represent the United States of America. As I grew up at the U.S. Embassy, Many days of the week I would go to the U.S. Embassy, had a special badge, just walking right in the front gate. And in those days, back in 1990, 30 years ago, every time I went to the U.S. Embassy, there was a long line of ties all the way down the road trying to get to the U.S., trying to get U.S. citizenship, trying to get to the U.S., doing anything they could to get to the U.S. of A. And as I would walk past this line to go in the door the diplomats get to use, dress a certain way with the embassy badge on, people would be begging me to help them get to the U.S. I had to dress a certain way, had to act a certain way, and in no way whatsoever could I get involved in Thai politics or the things that are happening in Thailand. And if I did, the U.S. Embassy would kick me out of Thailand and blacklist me, never to come back here again. Of course, I wasn't born again at the time. When I was 17 year old, I got in some big trouble. They put me in the front page of the news, or the second page of the newspaper, but I took up half the page of picture of me. Kind of embarrassing. <laughs> and they, they made a note that I was a diplomat's son. I got in big trouble for giving the U.S. Embassy a bad name and had to promise I'd be a good boy after that and not get in trouble again. That's what happens when you're a diplomat or a diplomat's son. You have to behave a certain way. You have to act a certain way. And you cannot get involved in Thai politics. You cannot get involved in things of this country or you'd be kicked out by the U.S. Embassy. The Bible says we are ambassadors for Christ. In the book of Colossians, it is written, what happened when we were born again? Here's what happened to you when you were born again. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers, the heritage of the saints in light. Verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. It does not say he's going to translate us. He has done it when we're born again. We now belong to the kingdom of God. And in Christ, what are we? We are ambassadors for Christ. As ambassadors for Christ, you have to act a certain way. If not, your King Jesus can become very upset with you. And what can King Jesus do to you? Kick you out of the kingdom. You have to act a certain way as an ambassador for Christ. Whether you like it or not, if you are in Christ, if you've been born again, you've been translated, into the kingdom of God's dear son, Jesus. Yes, you're in this world, but you're no longer of the world. Yes, you're born in America, but you're no longer of America. You now belong to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Your loyalty is to be to your king, Jesus Christ. And on this earth, no matter where you're born, you are an ambassador for Christ. You're a diplomat for heaven. You are part of heaven's embassy on this earth, the church the people of God, the embassy of God. You're to represent Christ in a certain way. And if you do not, you could get in big trouble 
with the King, Jesus Christ. Therefore, you have to act a certain way. You have to live a certain way. And on this world, you cannot get involved in politics. You cannot have any political ambition. You cannot even partake in politics, even voting. Because if you do, you have betrayed Jesus Christ. That means you're not of the kingdom of Christ. You're of this world. Just like when I came here in 1990 as a diplomat's son, I could not get involved in Thai politics. If I did, you could get in very serious trouble with the U.S. government as a diplomat's son. You gotta stay away from Thai politics because you're representing the United States of America as a diplomat's son. We are ambassadors for Christ. No matter where you are in the world, if you are an ambassador for Christ, if you're part of the Church of Christ, the embassy of Christ on this earth, representing Jesus Christ on this earth, you cannot get involved in the politics of this world. And if you do, you have betrayed your king, Jesus Christ. Whose kingdom do you belong to? If you belong to Christ's kingdom, you're going to be involved in the kingdom of Christ. You're going to be involving yourself in the things that pertain to the kingdom of Christ. Just like 30 years ago, when all these ties are trying to get to the United States of America, there's people out there trying to get to heaven. And we are the embassy. We are the embassy of Christ on this earth, the church. We are the ambassador of Christ. We're the ones that need to come to. That's where our focus needs to be on those who are trying to get to heaven. They're begging at heaven's door. How do they get there? And the Lord says, I've sent my servants to preach the gospel to you. How should they believe in him whom they've not heard? How should they hear without a preacher? We are to do the kingdom works and preach in the gospel for souls to get to heaven. But if we stop doing this kingdom work, Souls won't get to heaven. And if we're too busy focusing on politics, we're doing contrary to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And if we get involved in politics, you're going to turn people away from the Lord. That's why in 1990, when long lines of Thai people like the U.S. Embassy trying to get to America, and of course in that long line, there is different people with different political affiliations. And if the United States of America joined with any political affiliation, you would cause problems here, would you not? Therefore, the United States of America had to stay out of Thai politics because their job here was to get Thai people to America. That's what their job here was. That's where their focus was and not get involved in Thai politics. And same as us as ambassadors for Christ on this earth. Our job is for the kingdom of God. Our job is to get souls into God's kingdom. We have been given a commission, a great commission, by our king to preach the gospel to every creature so that they can get to heaven when they die. That's what God's will is. That's where God's concern is. And the politics of this world, we are to avoid. We're to stay out of it. We're not to conform to this world or any nation of this world. We're not to get involved in things of the world, for the world passes with the lust thereof. The Bible says the world lieth under wickedness. And if you get involved in any political party, it's wicked. But you don't understand. Those Democrats, they're into abortion. abortion. Well, the Republicans are into the rights of sodomites. Which one is an abomination in the sight of God? Abortion, which is bad, is sin, is murder, or sodomy and protecting sodomites and give them rights. Both parties are wrong. Both parties are wicked. They're all wrong. They're all wicked. They're all of the world. And the world lieth under wickedness. We're to come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. And Christ, we're to be crucified in this world and the world is to be crucified with us and we're not to be informed of this world because we're new creatures in Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ and our duty on this earth is to represent heaven as God's embassy on this earth the church of Jesus Christ as his ambassadors for souls to make it to heaven when they die as Christ has given to us his great commission to go beyond the world and to preach the gospel to every creature and if we sell out and get involved in politics or supporting politicians, or getting into the things of this world, you're not doing the works of the kingdom. And you can be a grave danger 
of being kicked out of the kingdom of God. As easy it is for you to get into God's kingdom, it is just as easy as for you to leave. God's kingdom is not communism. You know, in the communist countries, they seal their borders so you can't escape. And they really, if you try to escape communist countries, they'll try to kill you. God's kingdom is not communist. God's kingdom is free. You can freely enter and you can freely leave. Therefore, you've got to know who you are in Christ. Are you born again? Are you a new creature, Christ? Then you're ambassador for Christ. And as an ambassador of Christ, you need to be focused on the kingdom. You need to be seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You need to be focused on the things of God, the kingdom of God, and the will of God, and not the things of this world, not the politics of this world, not the politicians of this world, or the political parties of this world, or the nations of this world. You're not to get involved in these things. You are to be focused on being who you are in Christ, a new creature an ambassador for Christ, fulfilling Christ our King's great commission to go into the world and to preach the gospel of every creature. And when those of us who are new creatures of Christ, who are ambassadors for Christ, fulfill Christ's great commission, we can be fruitful to the glory of God. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy faithfulness for preserving thy pure words for us. Pray that us even sanctify us with thy truth. Those even sanctify and cleanse us through the washing of the water of thy word. They be presented unto thee, O Lord, a glorious church, not having spot nor wrinkle, any such thing, to be holy, the blemish we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord.